the Carolina Tar Heels have completed the undefeated season for the sixth time, culminating to their 10th unprecedented national championship. Shelton announced her retirement this afternoon after 42 stellar seasons in Chapel Hill. Nobody thought that a 23-year-old coach could lead a team to a national championship. Nobody thought that this team could play without Aaron Matson. At 23 years old, Matson is the youngest head coach in all of Division I sports. The whole country was definitely eyes on us, doubting us that we had this young coach. There was definitely doubters, definitely rumors. I mean, people talking. How are you going to deal with being that coach's best friend and being in her grade and growing up with her the last five years and then she's now like your leader and your coach like how are you going to deal with that the daughters gave us fuel as a team and i think it pushed us to know that we can do this without aaron it was all about how we can come together as a team and prove those daughters wrong To be a champion is a choice, and to believe that you're not gonna lose at any point, and you got this. And really just putting your hearts together and playing. The team knew, I sat down um, with them before the application process and I was lucky to have all of their support from the beginning before I even applied. The initial meeting, Bubba and Larry Gallo walked me in the room and you know introduced me as their head coach and you could see some weren't surprised at all. I raised my hand and I said, do we have to call you coach? <laughs> and everyone just erupted into laughter and it was perfect and it got all of the, you know, any awkwardness that would be there, it was gone. I just remember everybody was like, our mouths just dropped. I knew that it could happen, but I didn't think it would actually happen. I think it put a lot of smiles on the girls' faces, so it was confirmed and like the rumors were true um, about her being head coach. Hey, don't just play 1v1. Have a plan, She said, P, I want you to come back and lead this team. I want your leadership. I want your energy. The girls love you. You love them. Like, let's just do this together. I think in prior years, it was kind of, we knew we were the best. And this year, we needed to prove it. There was no time to let off the gas. Heels on three. One, two, three. Heels. Heels. Can we we went to my teammate Dorit's house, her family's lake house on Lake Gaston. And it's just fun team bonding. Girls were hanging out on pool rafts, we ate, parents were there, we built like flower bouquets um, that were Carolina blue, obviously. We definitely love to joke around, have fun, just kind of like not talk about field hockey when we're not in field hockey mode, which is honestly, I think, a really good balance and what makes our team so special. They uh, started putting like this bag, like this little bag out, and I'm like, oh, that's the rings. Like there's two big like boxes in there, and we all opened it up together. Oh my gosh. We got our rings there, which was really special, and it was just a little piece of inspiration for the incoming players, the transfers. Wow. And then on the inside it says Carolina Priceless Gem. Aww. Watching them open their rings, I think, was a really cool experience, and kind of put me in the mindset, like, this is where I want to be. I want to be in November at the end of the year winning um, and hopefully getting my own ring that I could open. Right after we got those rings, we are like, okay, like, that's great. We celebrated that, but we're on to the next year. And we kind of set those rings aside and started looking forward towards hopefully getting another one. Going into the new season, showing the freshmen this is the expectation. We want to have these rings next year, but there's so much to do in order to get to that point. Oh, the light. <laughs> it's inspiring for the freshmen to see that as well, and that day always stands out.
first practice, you know, it, it took some time to get into it, but only because I wanted to, it to be perfect for them. Our first practice was definitely rough. Erin loves her little pulls and technical stuff. And we were probably all dying, definitely. We call them touches and we hate them. <laughs> but they do make us better. Erin's a big fundamental girl. So our first practice, we did a straight 30 minutes of just receiving and passing and then pulling right and pulling left, no breaks. She's not your friend. She's not your roommate anymore. She's your coach. I need to learn from them. They need to trust me. Definitely, I was a good bridge between kind of being the voice for the team, but also being the voice for her, kind of of what the team needs. So I think because of our relationship and me knowing Erin the past couple of years, it helped, I think, transition her into that position. Erin has done a good job keeping consistency with what Coach Shellen had, which I think also really helped in our success. There wasn't much change. She came in, she did what she had to do, and she was the best leader. Walking to the field, I've never been more nervous. That was gonna be our first game playing together without Aaron. So I think we all had something to prove that game. The team stepped back and was like, wow, we are doing something different, unique, something that is wonderful for the sport wonderful for our university. Tomasi now trying to flip it, and she scores! That day was just a special moment um, for Erin, and we were so happy for her, for her to get her first career win. That kind of set the tone for our season. Um, being like, we can do this. It just proved everyone wrong that like Erin had her first win and us as players had our first win with her as a coach. I remember thinking to myself during the game, we just need one goal to like slip and normally Erin would, would be the one to like put that goal away, um, but we didn't have that. To a backhand, knocked around and in and that is it, Iowa wins in Chapel Hill against the Tar Heels for the first time ever. We lost in overtime. I think it was like within two or three minutes, which was even worse because overtime is something that we take pride in. I went back and watched that game three times, being like, how did we lose this game? What, what did we do wrong? I was really, really impressed um, with the girls in that sense because there was never any doubt. There wasn't frustration at each other or you know, that animosity of it's your fault and placing blame and for a team that was so used to winning all the games for the second game of the season to already be faced with the loss, they were all like, we're fine. This showed us that we have a lot to improve on and this wasn't gonna be easy for us. We needed to work every day and this wasn't gonna be handed to us. I obviously have not lost before because I was on undefeated team last year, but I think it kind of helped us just realize that we have to work harder for like ourselves and our team. That's when I knew, okay, even with challenges and obstacles and stuff, this team's, this team's gonna be good and they can handle it. We met with Aaron and the staff and the leadership group. They're like, okay, it's coming together, guys. Like, we're, it's not supposed to be perfect right now. As Tim would say, layering the cake, he's like, we're putting another layer on the cake. He would say, I think we have the biggest cake. <laughs> and the best cake and with the most ingredients. And I looked at them and I said, girls, I know we're good. <laughs> it's my job to tell you that. There was no doubt in my, my mind either that, you know, they were going to be okay and they handled it very mature. You're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days, and it's all in how you deal with it and how, as a whole, as a team, you pick each other up. UVA falling behind by two at halftime. And then the Cavaliers erupted in the third quarter. And they take down the Tar Heels for the first time in seven years. We knew if we were in a moment where a team we thought was gaining momentum or they scored a goal, we met in a huddle and we were firing each other up. And then we kind of said the motto, to be a champion is a choice. We knew there was still more that like needed to be accomplished and fixed and worked on. We want to prove it to ourselves, but a big new lineup, new leaders on the field, new goal scorers, 
The team was really great in supporting me, stepping into that role and gave me a lot of confidence and put a lot of trust in me that I was gonna succeed, which helped me a lot. I think we were just getting more confident going back to the Carolina Field Hockey way, passing the ball, sharing the ball. Definitely our defense was growing stronger. Maddie was gaining more confidence in the goal. The pieces of the puzzle were getting put together. Weaves through Sienna Pegram. Sends it to the line, deflected it in. Katie Dixon. The national team member makes it four, nothing heels. The pasta party, oh, that was, that was awesome. We actually hosted that at my house. Some of it was funny because it's like, we don't have the best cooks on the team. You can tell who can cook and who can't. I love to cook. It's, I'm very passionate about it. Ramey, I gotta say, she was the winner with the eggplant parm. Charlie Bruder, this is funny, brought pizza from Avery Dining Hall. Um, as her meal to contribute to the team. Very nice of her, because actually everyone ate it. I think it was just a really great night. Everyone just had a really good time in each other's company, getting to eat, just hang out and, and chill the night before a game. One of college's biggest and oldest rivalries rekindles tonight, Duke and North Carolina. Final day of the regular season to decide the regular season champion and number one seed. We knew that we had to beat Duke if we wanted any chance at hosting. We all love playing at Karen Shelton Stadium. That's no question. That's our favorite place to play. It's our heaven on earth. The team decorated our locker room. Uh, they got us like a little present. Aaron, I'm pretty sure, wrote us all, uh, all the seniors little notes. We love playing Duke. We love the hype around it, all of it. We knew it was gonna be a tough game, but we, we were ready to work and we were ready to earn it. I know a lot of the Duke players. We all do because we all grew up playing against them. So like, we knew like their strengths before the, like we even scouted them. On the outside. Loose ball and Dixon with a turn and a sweep. Two one. I wasn't even expecting to score, and I could just see. Everyone just light up and just screaming. And I don't know, it, it just felt like we were a team. And that was the first time I was like, this is the UNC Padaki that we've been waiting for. There was that animal in this team this year. And I think that's what they finally found right around the point of the Duke game. And the Tar Heels win their second consecutive regular season crown. The number one seed at the upcoming ACC championship. My time at Carolina is kind of over, but that could have been my last game ever on Karen Shelton Stadium. What more do you want for your seniors than to have a win uh, with all of the all of our fans there, all of our families there? Over a team like that, we were ranked, you know, the top teams in the country. We had lost to them, we're back on their turf again. Um, I think it was a moment that our team knew, okay, this will be the test to know if we actually grew from our last time against them. Semi-final Wednesday, the 2023 ACC Field Hockey Championship. Turf Field, Charlottesville, Virginia. Going into the UVA game, like that was our goal, just to play the full 60 minutes at our best in game. I remember just the momentum was ours the whole time. We never let them get back into the game. Carolina advances to the ACC championship game. An opportunity now to go for seven in a row. It's the one seed and six consecutive tournament champion, North Carolina, taking on their tobacco road rival in Duke. I think Playing Duke in the finals, we wanted it to be Duke. We knew that the fire would come out and we knew that we were not gonna lose to Duke, but we also knew they did have some threats that we needed to take care of. Off the corner, I inserted the ball. She took the shot as she was supposed to at the top of the circle, came back to her, and as soon as it came back, I thought she was gonna send it like low to the corners. And then all of a sudden I saw her pick it up and I was like, she is not about to do this. We cannot be risking this right now. Riley is such a, a hard player to stop. She really is a scorer and she finds ways to do it. Just 
chuck it over her head and just see what happens. Don't like air dribble or do too much pretty stuff, which that was a pretty fancy thing to do. That's just like one of Riley's specialties is her air dribbling skills and how she's able to eliminate goalies with that skill. Now this morning on Sports Center, college field hockey, it's Duke, it's North Carolina. Riley Heck has her shot blocked, but then look at just the little scoop. And you might be thinking to yourself, a little scooper? What the heck? What the, the heck is right? Riley Beauty, North Carolina, 2-0 winners. It went like crazy in our group message, um, and everybody was so excited because it's, it's rare for Field Hockey to be on there, and for it to be a number one, that, that's something really cool. 26th ACC title for Carolina, their seventh in a row, 2-0 over Duke. It was Aaron's first, which was really special, and we got to do it beating Duke, which makes it even more special. <laughs> This is our 26th, and we still have what it takes. After getting that championship, it was pretty cool to be um, a part of six ACC championships here at Carolina. Anyone comes to Carolina, especially for field hockey, um, you come here to win because it's what Carolina does. Recording live from Charlottesville, Virginia, your 2023 ACC champs! The youngest coach in NCAA Division I sports this year. The 23-year-old star player turned head coach. And the youngest head coach in all of Division I athletics. I think the team from the start knew there was going to be a different spotlight on the program than there's been in the past just because of the story. But, you know, the story helps the program. The story helps field hockey. So let's leverage that. However, hey, team, there's going to be cameras around. My name's going to be all over the place. It doesn't matter. She may not be North Carolina's best known athlete, with the likes of Michael Jordan and Mia Hamm, but Erin Matson is one of its most decorated. We would go into practice, there'd be cameras and stuff around, but I mean, we would just kind of ignore them. Hopefully they're not in our way and we could do what we need to do. Bidaki doesn't really get that recognition, and it's really cool to, for Carolina to get that recognition because it is such a special place and deserves all the love and attention. It's really good for the sport of field hockey to actually get that national attention because girls from all around the U.S. now probably know what field hockey is. With that came kind of publicity of people doubting us and people not thinking that we could do it on the flip side. I think our team was so mature that we could handle the media and we could handle all the publicity that we were getting. What school do you see the head football coach before his Duke game that Saturday taking time to come and talk to the field hockey team? Everybody knows who this is, right? <laughs> <laughs> the team was sitting there with their jaws on the floor, just like, is Mac Brown really talking to us right now? His speech was so inspiring, and I think our team resonated with him a lot and what he had to say. His main message was kind of go out there, have fun, enjoy the moment, and play to your standard. You're, you're not playing William and Mary today. You're playing standard. And you're playing the standard to win the national championship. And when he said it, it gave me the goosebumps. One of the things I will steal from him forever is that we were playing our standard. And that's what we do year in and year out. There's no second. There's no third. It's either yes or no. Here we go. Goes on three. One, two, three. Yes! Yeah. Nothing better than a postseason game at home. Best day to be a car hero. Now it's postseason and we do not mess around. <laughs> William and Mary, champions of the CAA. Our confidence, I think, was at its peak when we won the ACC championship and then Kelly got hurt. We lost one of our starters back there who played the entire game and who we relied on. Um, and I think that was another turning point in the season where the team said, okay, we're gonna rally behind this. Going into the William & Mary game, I think our team wasn't too nervous, but we also knew that we had underestimated teams before and we were not about to let that happen on our first game and get upset on our home field. Bruder takes a crack and puts North Carolina on the board. It was a fun game though when we got the hang of it. Uh, I think we definitely dominated the whole game. Leaving the locker room and coming into the huddle and we were just like, we need to keep scoring. We need to show everyone that we are a force to be reckoned with. The Tar Heels handle William and Mary today. 6-1 your final, it's the first NCAA tournament win as a head coach for Aaron Matson.
and the Tar Heels to the national quarterfinals for the 14th time in the last 15 years. It was honestly a blessing in disguise that we had a game like that just to boost confidences and help the team overall just come together without Kelly. Obviously it was a big loss that we lost her, but we were such an adaptable team and a mature team that we were able to put people in different positions and they were going to thrive in those positions. It's the second round of the NCAA Field Hockey Championship. The number one national seed and reigning national champion, North Carolina Tar Heels, hosting the champions of the Ivy League, one of the hottest teams in the nation and winners of 11 in a row, the Harvard Crimson. Going from the William & Mary game to the Harvard game was definitely an adjustment. They also have a lot of international players, so that's why the speed of the game was definitely elevated. It was a team we, we haven't played uh, in a long time, honestly, not even this season, but in a while. They're a good team. We knew they were fast. They had speedy midfielders and forwards. And they had a gritty goalie. Peyton Worth now. Worth. Weaving her way, Peyton Worth on her way in, knocked free by Chabot, and a corner for Carolina. A corner is something that so seems so easy, but is not at all. So I think that doing and learning how to do penalty corners over again, kind of in a sense, because we didn't have Aaron on the field who was the leader of that anymore. So it was a lot of people stepping up and figuring out, okay, what are we gonna do here? If you're in the circle, take your shot, look for a corner. Sure, if you have a better pass, set your teammate up for success. If you're a center mid or a left mid or a right mid, whatever, I want you scoring too. 14 times in 15 years, the Tar Heels to the national semifinals. I remember walking off the field and telling one of my teammates that was the hardest game I've ever played in. That's, I think, when we had the confidence to think we could do it all. It's the final weekend of the field hockey season across the college spectrum. 79 teams with a dream to be here. Karen Shelton Stadium, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And on this day, only four remain. We lost to them first matchup in the season, and we learned from that exponentially. We figured out how to outlet against them. I think that was a big thing that we were focusing on because that's what gave us such a hard time. The first time we played them, yeah. This team thrived off of home field advantage and the atmosphere Chapel Hill created in our fans and just being on your turf. So we knew playing UVA, you know, at home was going to be a different matchup. Quick movement inside by the Tar Heels. Worth a cross and they score! And the Tar Heels strike first. We irritated UVA and that's exactly what we wanted. Tip, tip, and rebound in and scores off of a stick. Came from up top. Nice job by Sitska Bruning. I think I only had two saves, maybe touched the ball three or four times. Our attack played so well that game, along with our defense and Maddie um, just shutting them out. I was super happy as a corner defensive unit that we worked so well together um, and we really defended UVA. The forwards, midfielders tackling back, like that helped us tremendously. They did so well all season doing that, which also played a role in how we were so successful. We're in the final four and every minute of this game is ours. We definitely, I think, showed it. So our team played a really clean game of hockey against a really, really talented UVA team and we're able to execute our game in a final four and I think really set us up with a lot of confidence going into the next game. We won and we're going to the final game, but we haven't done anything yet. We weren't necessarily over enthusiastic, cheering aggressively, like jumping and all of that because we knew that our job wasn't finished yet. Today, my ask of you is to feel your emotions and to be present with them and think about the nerves. It's a good thing. It means you want it badly. Think about the fear and let that sink in, okay? Think about failure. Don't be scared of it. Then you feel the confidence. You feel the bravery. 
and the minute you step on that field, you are ready, you are prepared, you've blown everyone's mind. Do you think anybody thought you guys could do this? No one in America thought that we would be playing this game right now. You have changed the game of field hockey. Be fearless today, be brave. You have everyone behind you. We had no idea it was gonna be 3,200 people. We knew tickets were sold out, standing room only. 3,200 for our fans and families and friends and everyone to gather like that. And strangers who have never seen a hockey game but have just bought into the hype and um, you know everything around the story and the sport. It was an unreal atmosphere. Weather was perfect, the trees were beautiful and orange, clashing with the Carolina blue standing out, you know, and the sea of people everywhere. It was just uh, literally a movie. Tar Heels will have the pass back wearing their Carolina blue jerseys, Northwestern in the white jerseys today, and we are underway. No numbers for Peyton Worth, the centering ball. And a corner. So we'll see what uh, the Tar Heels have drawn up on this first corner opportunity as Peyton Worth sets up for Charlie Bruder's big smash. And they score! They score! Western one nothing lead is still uh, races my heart. Going up 1-0, we knew we weren't secure. Like, we know it's a national championship game. Anything can happen. Leah Marshall will insert Wattis and Trump. Your strikers. And here's Trump, flicks it. Oh, the goal line saved there by Grace Potterbaum. They're gonna call a stroke. There was a delay on the call. Peyton Halsey is four for four on the year from the stroke line. And we're tied at one. It's coming down to the final 15. You know, I, I would like to score more, but uh, I think our defense stepped up that game. Oh, goodness. Here's the speedy Olivia Bencroft. She's got Ricardo to beat. I made a decision. I was like, I'm going to number three. She's fast. She's quick. Just keep her in front of me. I saw Ramey was going over to three. There was just not enough time for her to even think about getting to two. So my thought process was like, hey, I'm going to go make this save. Ramey's going to see me going, taking care of the 1v1. She's going to stay on her player. And I don't even think number two knew that she was coming. She's got Ricardo to beat. Little give and go action. Wow, what a save. Maddie Khan comes out and it rebounds all the way out to Santa Hawk. That's teamwork, and that's what we train. We train those being uncomfortable. That was a close one for sure. Um, I thought it was over at that point, but then I knew, OK, this is ours now. And we are headed to finish the season in 2023 to crown a champion by going to a shootout. We've practiced this. You guys have done so many reps. Maddie, you've stopped so many of our shootouts. Riley, all, like you have all scored so many as well. Riley Heck will go first. Scoobish is set. They'll play on the whistle. They'll start on the whistle. Here's Heck. Here's Scoobish. The spin move is good. Riley Heck with the goal. And I'm like, okay, but that's only one. Peyton Halsey will face Maddie Kahn here. Halsey with the answer. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit sick. I think I was like praying during <laughs> Please don't let us lose on our home field with this many people watching. I'm <laughs> thinking, come on, Maddie Con, like, this is you, girlfriend. This is where you, this is where you gotta just be a rock star for all of us. Maddie's amazing at shootouts, and I have full confidence in her, but also it's hard not to get in your head as a goalie when the other team's up and she, you have to save this. I'm like, okay, all right, all right, if a miracle's gonna happen, this is gonna be it. Lindsey Frank now steps in. Oh! 
still some time and kicked away by Maddie Kahn. This is just like practice. You did this two times this week, and I made both of mine. Here's Katie Dixon now. Important. If you're a Tar Heel fan, Dixon wraps it around on the forehand. Knots it up at two. My favorite one, you know, she just went up there, controlled it. You know, that's a that's a high pressure situation um, for her to walk up there and say, I have to make this. Bounced away. Maddie Kahn raising it up. Yeah, Maddie was a beast. She saved our butts. Like, there's no other way to put it. Riley Heck. The Scoobish is ready and steps in. I do a spin every time. Like, she knows exactly what I'm going to do. And when I walked up there, um, my first thought was just go with your gut, plan A. Peyton turns to me and is like, Sianna, if this goes in, like, do we win? And I was like, I don't know, Peyton. Like, <laughs> maybe. Heck circles wide and scores! Riley Heck has done it! The 11th national championship for Carolina on their home turf! I screamed, I ran, I threw my stick, and then I went straight to Riley, and I jumped so high that literally, if you look at the video, I'm the highest, just screaming. Like, I don't even think I feel my body at this point. Relief, chills, and every emotion going through your body. And as soon as she spun and put it in, I remember that was, that was a moment I will never forget. Knowing that we did it as a team, like we, did something that so many people were like, they can't do that. Like, the doubt was just over. Five rings, five fingers. You know, Renee Ricardo, the only student athlete in history to be able to say she's won a national championship five times. I think finally now it's kind of hitting me that I've just now won five national championships that I don't know if anyone has ever done in their career. So Dana comes up to me and she's like, the guy that takes our pictures wants to recreate the scene of Michael Jordan winning his fifth championship. And me holding up the five um, and then the fist, <laughs> yeah. And it was just like a cool moment to be a part of that picture and kind of compared to Michael Jordan being this successful. It's not just me, it's all the people around me that helped me be this successful. That's Rome Ricardo, 11 in blue. There's two Ricardos, her sister Sienna, also on the Carolina roster. To say that we've been able to play with each other but know each other so well in those moments that we were connected. A little miscommunication there between the Ricardo sister, Sienna. Didn't realize sister Rome was behind her. There's also a lot of like tough love. Like when I, she hit her hand, or split her thumb open, she came running up to me and I'm like, you're okay, just run off the field. Like, And then when I got hit, she was the first one by my side, holding, catching my blood. <laughs> I would get the stitches again just to win a national <laughs> championship. I can second that. <laughs> What better way to draw it up than one versus two sudden death shootouts on number one's home field with 3,200 people cheering them on? Oh, yeah! To win a national championship for your university is a feeling that you hope every student athlete experiences. That feeling of pride, happiness, belonging forever, that you did something to change the university forever. We definitely talked about Jordan year and how special this year was to be able to win on year 23, 2023. To win a national championship in the Jordan year is pretty legendary, I, th I would say. It's pretty cool to tell your kids in 10 years, like, yeah, what a national championship in Jordan year, so. When I transferred, I won a natty on the home field, and now I'll be leaving with a national championship on the home field. Five rings, five trophies, Mary against Maryland. Prince, same thing, 
solid win over Princeton. Mish, Michigan, I can't believe I'm rattling off five trophy names right now. Then we have North uh, against Northwestern the first time. Good little Kim K reference there. We have the trophy sitting on the floor and I'm like, guys, what are we, what are you gonna name it? And they're like, well, we could do West. And Peyton Worth chimes in, she goes, Cardi. And we're all like, what do you mean, Cardi? She's like, well, Northwestern referred to themselves as the Cardiac Cats for a while. And we were like, Cardi, that is awesome. I think it just shows how much Erin loves this team and the Carolina family and all of that. And she really, truly wants to do it for us and wants to do it for the university. And she just really cares. We proved all of them wrong and all the joy was just captured in that moment. Getting my own ring to open and get to look at for forever and get to remember that moment. It's something that I'm gonna carry with me for forever. 11 national championships, it's crazy. You're competing uh, alongside of the best players in the country, but also having the best time and they're your family, they're your sisters. To be a champion is a choice is what UNC Filaki really embodies. I don't know if many get the, the gift to feel what they have allowed me to feel. So we're just, we're just proud.